How to rebuild a vintage steam toy. This is part two. Reshaping the firebox, paint removal, straightening the top of the boiler and cleaning the brass shell. And I may as well start with reshaping the firebox. As you can see, it's a bit bent. It's a bit all over the place. There's quite a lot of distortion in various areas of this, so I need to put this right. And I'm going to do that by using this large piece of steel that's also on the bench. The piece of steel bar is almost as big as the firebox, but not quite. And in this clip, you can see what I'm doing with the steel bar. It's in my vise in the outer part of the workshop clamped very tightly, and I can move the firebox around the bar and tap it back into the correct shape. And I'm starting the job by reprofiling the mounting holes where the rivets went through to hold the bracket to the firebox. When doing a job like this, you have to be very, very careful. Don't put too much pressure on the work, otherwise the metal will stretch and really distort, then you will have a problem. I'm using a small hammer and making very light impacts on the work. I'm speeding up the job because it took quite a long time and you can see how I'm managing to straighten the firebox without distorting it. The holes have gone back to round and they look okay. In this clip I'm just working my way around the firebox removing any dints. As I hammer my way around the firebox the paint's getting chipped off and it's quite difficult to see which parts are level and which parts aren't so I'm using some emery cloth to remove the paint so I can accurately see the shape of the firebox. And at the risk of being criticised for repeating myself, when you're doing a job like this, you must use very light hammer blows and plenty of them. It's difficult sometimes when I'm doing a job like this because the easiest thing to do would be just to make a complete new firebox assembly. And I could get it to look just about the same as this, but the problem is it would no longer be original. One analogy I can think of is when you record drums in a recording studio, and believe me, over the years I've recorded plenty of those. The easiest thing to do is record the drums, then use the drums to trigger samples and replace the sounds of the kit on the track. But I don't like to do that. I like to use the original sound of the kit. I may modify it slightly, but what you basically listen to in the end is the sound of the drum kit that was brought into the studio in the first place. And similarly, I could replace this firebox assembly entirely, as I said earlier, but I don't want to do that. I want to keep the original essence of the engine present at all times. I like to carry out sympathetic restorations. This old boiler has had steam fittings in the top for a long time, and it's been knocked about a bit, so all the holes are not level, they're all a little bit wonky. I'm doing two jobs at once here. I'm trying to find out what the thread is in the top of the boiler. I'm pretty certain that this thread is metric, as this is a German engine, but 5 16 by 32 threads per inch is very close to the metric fine that's been used in the first place. And while this tap is in the hole, I just move it slightly to straighten out the top of the boiler. This is not a recommended job, by the way. Don't do it this way. The way I normally address this problem is to thread a piece of steel bar. To the right thread that goes into the boiler. Then I screw the steel bar into the bush at the top of the boiler and lever it back into the right position. Time to look at this bracket and remove the last remnants of these rivets. And removing this rivet proved to be difficult all the way, but I got it out in the end, and here it is. The part of the rivet that fits in the firebox is much larger than the outside part, but I'm not going to use this system when I refit the assembly. I'm going to make a specially shaped metal part which will fit inside the firebox and then I can screw some bolts from the bracket through the firebox into this metal plate and the whole assembly will then be sandwiched and very secure. This next part of the job requires a solvent. So I'm putting some cellulose thinners or lacquer thinner as you call it in the USA into a polythene box. And this solvent should remove the paint remnants from the bracket. I just need to leave it in there for a while. And while the paint is hopefully dissolving, I'm having a look at the crankshaft. And the bad news is, it's very pitted, well apart from it being very bent as well. So this is not a serviceable item, I'm going to make a new one. At the moment I'm wondering how the flywheel is secured to the crankshaft. I've fitted the crankshaft complete with the flywheel into the lathe chuck of my small boxwood lathe. And I know it looks like I'm trying to straighten it, but I'm not really, I'm just having a bit of a play. Time for a quick health and safety notice. It's a bit obvious, 
and you will see that I've removed the lathe tool from the tool post because a very sharp lathe tool sticking out into my work area would be a very bad thing. Watch this. I'll show how easy it can be done. If I'd have left the lathe tool in place, then I'm pretty certain I would have injured my hand. And here we go again. When I remove the crankshaft, you can see how close my hand gets to the tool post. This next part of the job isn't dangerous unless I stick the screwdriver in my thumb, which I'm not going to do even for the video because DIY sadomasochism is definitely not my thing. The water gauges on these small toy steam engines are not what I'm used to. I would normally use a piece of glass tubing that fits into the top and bottom of a water gauge fitting where it's held in place with a nut and an o-ring but these type of engines use a shaped piece of glass that's bent at right angles at the end of it and the shaped piece of glass where it enters the boiler is normally sealed with a rubber washer or at least it was like that on the last steam engine of this type that I had a look at. On this engine however the glass seems to be fastened in permanently with some car body filler. Now I've got two things I can do here. One is I can smash the glass, clean off the lot and put a new glass in. But before doing that, I would like to see whether I could buy a commercial replacement. I haven't really had a look round the web to see whether parts like this are still sold, but I presume they are. And I suppose the worst case scenario is if the gauge glass was broken, I would have to make a new one using a blowtorch and a piece of glass tubing. In the last episode, which was the first episode, I showed how the boiler had been lacquered at some time. This was probably done when the engine was new in the factory. But now with the ravages of time, the lacquer is not in such good condition. So I'm going to remove it and polish up the boiler. But before I go into the detail about that, I would just like to say you have to be careful when polishing old boilers like this one. This, as you can see, is a brass boiler and it's made out of very thin brass. So if you use a large polishing spindle with the commercial abrasive that you can get for polishing spindles, you really do have to make sure that you do not polish all the way through the brass and make a hole in the shell of the boiler. And even if the polishing spindle wheel didn't go all the way through, you are weakening what is already a weak structure. Looking on the bright side, this is a very low pressure boiler, but that's not the point. Even 15 pounds per square inch of steam with boiling water below it can cause injury if the boiler explodes. I normally use the polishing spindle first, very lightly, and then finish it off with this stuff. This is Brasso wadding, and all the polishing spindle does really is remove the old lacquer. It takes a while, but eventually you get a good finish and the boiler's not damaged at all. So here's the story so far. I still have to clean around the water gauge, as well as giving the boiler another good going over with Brasso, but already I see a bit of an improvement, and it can only get better from now on. I quite like the diversity of jobs I get in my workshop. On the left of the picture is a small steam toy, and on the right hand side is a Stuart Models 5A steam engine, one and a half horsepower. And what I have to do with this is fit the valve gear to it. The valve gear is not complete, I'll be making some parts, but I'll feature this in a series and show you exactly how I do it from start to finish in great detail. Another job on the bench very shortly is a spirit fired traction engine that I'm converting to gas firing. But that, alas, is the end of this episode, and as always, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.